check, 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 check. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Keith Matt Loaders. Knowledge, information, and entertainment. You know how it goes. Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. Now that level's the same. That's just volume right now. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Epic of Gilgamesh. It's raining here. Apparently we got a tropical storm slash hurricane that everyone's been hyping up for the past couple days, but... Don't know if you can tell or not. It's uh, fine. It's sprinkling outside, so we'll see. We'll see how she unravels, as they say. We'll see how she unravels. Please, everyone, welcome in. Take your shoes off. Stay a while. I'm just checking my levels to make sure we're coming through crispy. And it would seem as if... Hello, EW. Hello from Vancouver. I'm a big fan of your warm... Oh, thank you kindly. Appreciate that. Um... Wait, why do my vocals sound all weird right now? That is strange. Weird. <laughs> There's some kind of filter that my voice is going through because my I'm listening to the YouTube back and it sounds strange. Sound you weird? You hello, Norma Odessa. I'm actually in um, in uh, Ventura, California, but also trying to figure out what's going on with. It's so strange. It sounds like my voice is being run through a filter or something. Check, check, check. All right, I might have to boot back video chat, YouTube, boot mic. I'm gonna, give me a sec. I'm gonna disc. I'm gonna read the Epic of Gilgamesh for you guys in just a second. But there's something weird going on with the microphone, so I'm going to. Boots, background, video capture. <clears throat> Check, 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 hello. Your feedback would be of great importance right now if you guys could help me. Oh, it's okay at your end. Weird, I was listening to it back and it... Strange. Okay, you guys excited for the Epic of Gilgamesh? I am. No, when I was listening to my voice, I pulled up the YouTube video to, to hear what was coming through, and it sounded like Darth Vader from the original Star Wars movies. I was like, womp, 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 womp. Well, thank you for the feedback, EW and Omar. I really appreciate that. That helps a lot. <clears throat> that helps a lot. We'll get cracking in just a few seconds. Tea is still too hot to drink. Not even going to attempt it. It's still doing that. That is bizarre. 
All right, if you guys say the voice is coming in fine, then I, I will absolutely take your word for it. So I'm going to record while we read. If you hear me snap, it's because I made a mistake, and that helps me edit the video after the fact. Right now, I am doing a test run. Test, test, one, two, one, two, check, check, check. I'm going to play it back and make sure everything sounds good. And then we'll get cracking. Let's see. I'm going to record while we read. If you hear me snap, it's because I made a mistake, and that helps me edit the video after the fact. Right now, I am... Hmm. Sorcery. Sorcery. Okay, well, I guess without further ado... Tell us a few things about your growing up. Ah. Uh, so I grew up heavily into sports. It's probably some of my biggest and fondest memories. I played baseball growing up. Um, by the time I was 12, I had played in Arkansas, Colorado, Florida, Cooperstown, New York for the Little League World Series. Um, where one of my Grand Slam balls is in the Children's Hall of Fame. The Baseball Hall of Fame is in Cooperstown, New York. And they were building a child section, and my home run ball is autographed and in it. Um, I read Lord of the Rings like twice by the time I got into high school. Um, super into my fantasy books. I used to break dance with the homies. I was a break dancer. We would have our little break battles. <laughs> what else? Um, my child was pretty, pretty, I was pretty low key. I didn't really drink or party or anything until really after college. I played baseball through college in San Francisco, San Francisco State University. And then I graduated when I was 22 ish with a degree in environmental science and environmental philosophy. Uh, creative with a minor in creative writing. Um, what else? And I was still in San Francisco at the time, so that's when I decided to dip into all uh, that. That's that's when I found some gateway drugs into this world, like astral projection and hollow earth theory and stuff like that, lucid dreaming, and that sort of opened the hatch to all the all the wildness. Um, that led to this channel and a couple other YouTube channels that I've had. But, um, yeah. You are such a free man. I try. That is, <laughs> I am blessed. I do. I do have a lot of freedom in my life. Thank God I do have a lot of freedom in my life still. One always wants more, but. Where it stands now, I'm I'm pretty, pretty damn blessed. Blessed. How about you guys? How about you, EW, Norma? Still tripping on how I listen back to my YouTube video, and it sounds the way it does. My mind is blown right now. Maybe it's just where I'm watching it. You guys ready for me to start this video? Uh, if you're watching this after the live, please, and you're new, consider subscribing to the channel, uh, liking, commenting, and sharing. Uh, it really helps the growth of the channel and helps the vibe and keeps the dream alive, as one says. We have uh, this video will be, will be, upon completion, will be edited for a seamless final version. Uh tastefully done right now i just it's fun to do it live because then i don't feel like i'm alone in my den for hours on end recording stuff oh thank you ew i really appreciate that strength and power to my heart it is that is received and strength and love and abundance to yours as well Born in Afghanistan, spent my teenage years in India, studied duality many oh, again since two thousand four. I love nature and dreams. Oh man. EW, that is pretty amazing. 
in Canada since 2004. All right, that is... Grown up in Afghanistan, a place on the planet which contains probably the deepest and richest history of humanity to exist. It is unfortunate that the entire Western world is just using the Middle East as its stomping, as its pissing contest grounds. And then everything just gets destroyed in its wake. Breaks my heart, man. Breaks my heart. All right. <clears throat> well, without further ado, ladies and gents, I'm your host, Keith. Man of letters, knowledge, information, hopefully some entertainment. Um... Let's go. The Epic of Gilgamesh, translated by Maureen Gallery Kovacs. Tablet 1. He who has seen everything, I will make known blank to the lands. And I will teach about him who experienced all things alike. Anu granted him the totality of knowledge of all. He saw the secret, discovered the hidden. He brought information of the time before the flood. He went on a distant journey, pushing himself to exhaustion, but then was brought to peace. He carved on a stone stella all of his toils and built the wall of Uruk Haven, the wall of the sacred Iana Temple, the holy sanctuary. Look at its wall, which gleams like copper. Inspect its inner wall, the likes of which no one can equal. Take hold of the threshold of stone. It dates from ancient times. Go close to the Iana Temple, the residence of Ishtar, such as no king has ever equaled. Go up on the wall of Uruk and walk around, examine its foundation, inspect its brickwork thoroughly. Is not even the core of the brick structure made of kiln-fired brick, and did not the seven sages themselves lay out its plan? One league city, one league palm gardens, one league lowlands, the open area blank of the Ishtar temple. Three leagues and the open area of Uruk. It the wall encloses. Find the copper tablet box. Open the blank of its lock of bronze. Undo the fastening of its secret opening. Take and read out from the lapis lazuli tablet how Gilgamesh went through every hardship. Supreme over other kings, lordly in appearance, he is the hero born of Uruk the goring wild bull. He walks out in front, the leader, and walks at the rear, trusted by his companions, mighty nets protector of his people, raging flood wave who destroys even walls of stone. Offspring of Lugalbanda, Gilgamesh is strong to perfection, son of the august cow Rimat Ninsun. Gilgamesh is awesome to perfection. It was he who opened the mountain passes, who dug wells on the flank of the mountain. It was he who crossed the ocean, the vast seas to the rising sun, who explored the world regions seeking life. It was he who reached by his own sheer strength, Utanapishtim, the far... We'll go ahead and let that motorcycle just flare it up but be on its way.
can here. Great, thanks. Let's go then. It was he who reached by his own sheer strength, Utanapishtim, the far away, who restored the sanctuaries that the flood had destroyed for teeming mankind. Who can compare with him in kingliness? Who can say like Gilgamesh, I am king? Whose name from the day of his birth was called Gilgamesh. Two thirds of him is God, one third human. The great goddess Oruru designs blank the model for his body. She prepared his form. Beautiful, handsomest of men, perfect. He walks around in the enclosure of Uruk. Like a wild bull, he makes himself mighty, head raised over others. There is no rival who can raise his weapon against him. His fellows stand at the alert, attentive to his orders. And the men of Uruk become anxious in. Gilgamesh does not leave a son to his father. Day and night, he arrogantly blank. So, the following lines are interpreted as rhetorical, perhaps spoken by the oppressed citizens of Uruk. Also, if you hear me say blank, it's because we're reading from a broken tablet and some pieces are missing. Is Gilgamesh the shepherd of Uruk Haven? Is he the shepherd? Bold, eminent, knowing, wise. Gilgamesh does not leave a girl to her mother, the daughter of the warrior, the bride of the young man. The gods kept hearing their complaints, so the gods of the heavens implored the lord of Uruk, Anu. You have indeed brought into being a mighty wild bull, head raised. There is no rival who can raise a weapon against him. His fellows stand at the alert, attentive to his orders. Gilgamesh does not leave a son to his father. Day and night he arrogantly. Is he the shepherd of Uruk Haven? Is he their shepherd? Bold, eminent, knowing and wise, Gilgamesh does not leave a girl to her mother. The daughter of the warrior, the bride of the young man, Anu listened to their complaints, and the god and the gods called out to Aruru. It was you, Aruru, who created mankind. Now create a Zikru to it, slash him. Let him be equal to his Let him be equal to Gilgamesh's stormy heart. Let them be a match for each other so that Uruk may find peace. When Oruru heard this, she created within herself the Zikrit of Anu. Oruru washed her hands. She pinched off some clay and threw it into the wilderness. In the wilderness, she created valiant Enkidu, born of silence, endowed with strength by Ninurta. His whole body was shaggy with hair. He had a head full like a hair of He had a full head of hair like a woman. His locks billowed in profusion like Ashnan. He neither knew people nor settled living, but wore a garment like Sumukan. He ate grasses with the gazelles and jostled at the watering hole with the animals. As with animals, his thirst was slaked with mere water. A notorious trapper came face to face with him opposite the watering hole. A first, a second, and a third day, he came face to face with him opposite the watering hole. On seeing him, the trapper's face went stark with fear, and he, Enkidu, and his animals drew back home. He was rigid with fear, though stock still, his heart pounded and his face drained of color. He was miserable to the core. His face looked like one who had made a long journey. The trapper addressed his father, saying, Father, a certain fellow has come from the mountains. He is the mightiest in the land. His strength is as mighty as the meteorite of Anu. He continually goes over the mountains. He continually jostles at the watering place with the animals. He continually plants his feet opposite the watering place. I was afraid, so I did not go up to him. He filled in the pits that I had dug, wrenched out my traps that I had spread, released from my grasp of the wild animals. He does not let me make my rounds in the wilderness. The trapper's father spoke to him, saying, My son, there 
lives in Uruk, a certain Gilgamesh. There is no one stronger than he. He is as strong as the meteorite of Anu. Go, set off to Uruk. Tell Gilgamesh of this man of might. He will give you the harlot Shamhat. Take her with you. The woman will overcome the fellow as if she were strong. When the animals are drinking at the watering place, have her take off her robe and expose her sex. When he sees her, he will draw near to her. And his animals who grew up in his wilderness will be alien to him. Okay, so I had a feeling this would happen. I'm really excited right now. We read the Colburn Bible. The names are different, but the story is exactly the same. There was a mighty war, there was a mighty king, but he was alienated. And then he came across a wild man in the mountains who was his equal, but he was a, a wild man of the animals. They lured him out of the mountains with a harlot, exactly as this story goes. The reason why I'm excited is because in the Colburn Bible, um, the Colburn Bible contains complete texts, complete records without missing translation, without missing pieces of the tablets. In other words, we can get this story or at least other pieces of it that would otherwise be lost in other texts. The Colburn Bible is... Oh man, I just finished the first five books of it. Complete. Each book is like four to five and a half hours long, so there's a good... I don't even know, 20 to 25, 30 hours of audiobook in the Colburn Bible that's already finished on my channel. So if you haven't listened to those yet, I highly recommend it because it's the same, it's these same stories. What a lot of people don't realize is uh, uh, the Hittites, the the, uh, Phoenicians, Assyrians, Babylonians, Sumerians, Egyptians, they all wrote the same stories stories they gave them different names they wrote the the the, the account of the flood and the deluge is written dozens of different times with slight variations all of them dating from that the area in the near and, and middle east anywho i just wanted to share the excitement with you because that's pretty awesome and that makes me really happy okay anywho He heeded his father's advice. The trapper went off to Uruk. He made the journey, stood inside of Uruk, and declared to Gilgamesh, There is a certain fellow who has come from the mountains. He is the mightiest in the land. His strength is as mighty as the meteorite of Anu. He continually goes over the mountains. He continually jostles at the watering place with the animals. He continually plants his feet opposite the watering hole. I was afraid, so I did not go up to him. He filled in the pits that I had dug, wrenched out my traps that I had spread, released from my grasp of the wild animals. He does not let me make my rounds in the wilderness. Gilgamesh said to the trapper, Go, trapper, bring the harlot Shamhat with you. When the animals are drinking at the watering place, have her take her robe and expose her sex. While he sees her, he will draw near to her, and his animals who grew up in his wilderness will be alien to him. So the trapper went, bringing the harlot Shamhat with him. They set off on the journey making direct way, and on the third day they arrived at the appointed place, and the trapper and the harlot sat down at their posts. A first day and a second day they sat opposite the watering hole. The animals arrived and drank at the watering hole. The wild beasts arrived and slaked their thirst with water. Then he, Enkidu, offspring of the mountains who eats grasses with the gazelles, came to drink at the watering hole with the animals. With the wild beasts, he slaked his thirst with water. Then Shamhat saw him, a primitive, a savage fellow from the depths of the wilderness. That is he, Shamhat. Release your clenched arms, expose your sex so he can take in your voluptuousness. Do not be restrained, take his energy. When he sees you, he will withdraw near to you. Spread out your robe so he can lie upon you and perform for this primitive the task of womankind. His animals, who grew up in his wilderness, will become alien to him and his lust will groan over you. Shamat unclutched her bosom, exposed her sex, and he took her voluptuousness. She was not restrained. She was not restrained, but took his energy. She spread out her robe, and he lay upon her. She performed for the primitive the task of womankind. 
his lust groaned over her. For six days, seven nights, Enkidu stayed aroused and had intercourse with the harlot until he was sated with her charms. But when he returned his attention to his animals, the gazelles saw Enkidu and darted off. The wild animals distanced themselves from his body. Enkidu, blank, his utterly depleted body. His knees that wanted to go off with his animals went rigid. Enkidu was diminished, his running was not as before. But then he drew himself up, for his understanding had broadened. Turning around, he sat down at the harlot's feet. Gazing into her face, his ears attentive as the harlot spoke. Then the harlot said to Enkidu, You are beautiful, Enkidu. You are become like a god. Why do you gallop around the wilderness with the wild beasts? Come, let me bring you into Uruk Haven, to the holy temple, the residence of Anu and Ishtar, the place of Gilgamesh who was wise to perfection, but who stretched his power over the people like a wild bull. What she kept saying found favor with him. In becoming aware of himself, he sought a friend. Enkidu spoke to the harlot. Come, Shamhat, take me away with you, to the sacred holy temple, the residence of Anu and Ishtar, the place of Gilgamesh, who was wise to perfection, but who stretched his power over the people like a wild bull. I will challenge him. Let me shout out an Uruk that I am the mighty one. Lead me in and I will change the order of things. He whose strength is mightiest in the one born in the wilderness. Then Shamhat to Enkidu, Come, let us go, so he may see your face. I will lead you... I will lead you to Gilgamesh. Look about Enkidu inside Uruk Haven, where the people show off in skirted finery, where every day is a day for some festival where the lyre and drum play continually where harlots stand about prettily exlu where harlots stand about prettily exuding voluptuousness full of laughter and on the couch of night the sheets are spread enkidu you who do not know how to live i will show you gilgamesh a man of extreme feelings look at him gaze at his face he is a handsome youth with freshness his entire body exudes voluptuousness. He has mightier strength than you, without sleeping day or night. Enkidu, it is your wrong thoughts you must change. It is Gilgamesh whom Shamhat loves, and Anu, Enlil, and La have enlarged his mind. Even before you came from the mountain, Gilgamesh and Uruk had dreams about you. Gilgamesh got up and revealed the dream, saying to his mother, Mother, I had a dream last night. Stars of the sky appeared and some kind of meteorite of Anu fell next to me. I tried to lift it, but it was too mighty for me. I tried to turn it over, but I could not budge it. The land of Uruk was standing around it. The whole land had assembled about it. The populace was thronging around it. The men clustered about it and kissed its feet as if it were a little baby. I loved it and it embraced it as a wife. I laid it down at your feet, and you made it compete with me. The mother of Gilgamesh, the wise, all-knowing, said to her lord, Remat Ninsun, the wise, all-knowing, said to Gilgamesh, As for the stars of the sky that appeared, and the meteorite of Anu which fell next to you, you tried to lift, but it was too mighty for you. You tried to turn it over, but were unable to budge it. You laid it down at my feet, and I made it compete with you, and you loved and embraced it as a wife. There will come to you a mighty man, a comrade who saves his friend. He is the mightiest in the land, the strongest. His strength is mighty as the meteorite of Anu. You love him and embraced him as a wife, and it is he who will repeatedly save you. Your dream is good and propitious.
A second time Gilgamesh said to his mother, Mother, I have had another dream. At the gate of my marital chamber there lay an axe, and people had collected about it. The land of Uruk was standing around it. The whole land had assembled about it. The populace was thronging around it. I laid it down at your feet. I loved it and embraced it as a wife, and you made it compete with me. The mother of Gilgamesh, the wise, all-knowing, said to her son again, Rimat Ninsun, the wise, all-knowing, said to Gilgamesh, The axe that you saw is a man, that you love him and embrace as a wife, but that I have compete with you. There will come to you a mighty man, a comrade who saves his friend. He is the mightiest in the land. He is strongest. He is as mighty as the meteorite of Anu. Gilgamesh spoke to his mother, saying, By the command of Enlil, the great counselor, so may it pass. May I have a friend and advisor, a friend and advisor may I have. You have interpreted for me the dreams about him. After the harlot recounted the dreams of Gilgamesh to Enkidu, the two of them made love. That's end of chapter one. End of chapter one, or tablet one, excuse me. Hello everyone, welcome in, take your shoes off, stay a while, I am reading the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is having some pretty wild correspondences to a uh, story specifically out of the Colburn Bible, and I need to look that up, I'll do a nice little side-by-side -side video, this is pretty cool. I am excited. Do we have anyone new? Is there anyone not subscribed to the channel in here? Hello, welcome. I'm glad you glad you guys found yourselves here. I, I, I hope you're into this kind of thing. It's raining. It's raining outside. But um, actually, I take that back. We're supposed to be getting this tropical storm hurricane that the news has been talking all about. But so far, it's sprinkling. So far, it's sprinkling. Nothing serious. Hello there, Sir Jones. Whoa, Sir Jones. As my as my shed door, wooden wooden shed door slams upon saying that. Hello, everyone. Take your shoes off. Stay a while. I'm so glad you guys found your way here. Let's begin the second tablet. Feel free to, to donate to the channel. Help us pay for our tea and coffee that keeps the midnight oil burning. I, th I think there's a donation tab somewhere on this video. Um, my Patreon is in the, um, the description. I, I grow and sell exotic trees, frankincense trees, tamarind trees. I ha we have homegrown sage and, and um, vegetable seeds that we sell. We pour our own beeswax candles. It's just, a, it's just a spot where we can help fund our hobby so that we can keep doing it. So, um, Oh, the point being was if you join my Patreon, we have discounts to my Etsy shop. But also just liking the video too if you're in here, hitting the, hitting the like to get the algor algorithm boost, commenting, all that stuff helps tremendously. But uh, let's let's begin the second the second tablet. Thank you guys. Rusty Otter Milky, what's up, brother? Nice to see you. All right, let's go. Second chapter. Tablet 2. Enkidu sits in front of her. Also, before I go, um, so we have Enkidu, we have Gilgamesh, and we have Shamhat. Shamhat is the harlot that was used to bring Enkidu, the mountain man, from the mountains. And he lost his power, lost his animal ways, lost his ability to commune and communicate with the animals. Um, and they, and, and he's being brought to Gilgamesh by the harlot and milky if you uh, tell me how much this sounds like the same story from the colburn bible by the way Alm it's almost verbatim it doesn't surprise me but it does excite me anywho let's go tablet two 
Enkidu sits in front of her. The next 30 lines are missing. Some of the fragmentary lines from 35 are, are, are restored from the parallels and the old Babylonian. Why, blank, his own counsel, at his instruction, who knows his heart? Shamhat pulled off her clothing and clothed him with one piece while she clothed herself with a second. She took hold of him as the gods do and brought him to the hut of the shepherds. The shepherds gathered all around about him. They marveled to themselves how the youth resembles Gilgamesh, tall in stature, towering up to the battlements over the wall. Surely he was born in the mountains. His strength is as mighty as the meteorite of Anu. They placed food in front of him. They placed beer in front of him. Enkidu knew nothing about eating bread for food and of drinking beer he had not been taught. The harlot spoke to Enkidu, saying, Eat the food, Enkidu. It is the way one lives. Drink the beer, as is the custom of the land. Enkidu ate the food until he was sated. He drank the beer, seven jugs, and became expansive and sang with joy. He was elated, and his face glowed. He splashed his shaggy body with water. He rubbed himself with oil and turned into a human. He put on some clothing and became like a warrior. He took up his weapon and chased lions so that the shepherds could eat. He routed the wolves and chased the lions. With Enkidu as their guard, the herders could lie down. A wakeful man, a singular youth. A wakeful man, a singular youth. He was twice as tall as normal men. The next 33 lines are missing in the standard version. Lines 57 through 86 are taken from the old Babylonian. Then he raised his eyes and saw a man. He said to the harlot, Shamhat, have that man go away. Why has he come? I will call out his name. The harlot called out to the man and went over to him and spoke with him. The young man, young man, where are you hurrying? Why this arduous pace? The young man spoke, saying to Enkidu, They have invited me to a wedding, as is the custom of the people, the selection blank of the brides. I have heaped up tasty delights for the wedding on the ceremonial platter, for the king of Broadmart at Uruk opens is the veil. Open is the veil of the people for choosing a girl. For Gilgamesh, the king of Broadmart at Uruk, open is the veil of the people for choosing. He will have intercourse with the destined wife. He first, the husband, and after. He first, the husband, after. This is ordered by the council of Anu. From the severing of his umbilical cord, it has been destined for him. At the young man's speech, Enkidu's face flushed with anger. Here several lines are missing. Enkidu walked in front and Shamhat after him. The standard version resumes here. He, Enkidu, walked down the street of Uruk Haven, mighty. He blocked the way through Uruk, the sheepfold. The land of Uruk stood around him. The whole land assembled about him. The populace was thronging around him. The men were clustered about him and kissed his feet as if he were a little baby. Suddenly a handsome young man, for Ishara, the bed of nights, marriage is ready. For Gilgamesh, as for a god, a counterpart is set up. Enkidu blocked the entry to the marital chamber and would not allow Gilgamesh to be brought in. They grappled with each other at the entry to the marital chamber. In the street they attacked each other, the public square of the land, the doorposts trembled and the wall shook. About 42 lines are missing from the standard version here. Lines 103 to 129 are taken from the old Babylonian version. Gilgamesh bent his knee with his other foot on the ground. His anger abated and he turned his chest away. After he turned his chest, Enkidu said to Gilgamesh, Your mother bore you ever unique. The wild cow of the enclosure, Ninsen, your head is elevated over other men. Enlil has destined for you the kingship over the people. 
They kissed each other, and they became friends. His strength is the mightiest in the land. His strength is as mighty as a meteorite of Anu. The mother of Gilgamesh spoke to Gilgamesh, saying, Remat Nunsun said to her son, Remar Nunsun, my son, plaintively. She went up into his gateway. Plaintively, she implored. Enkidu has no father, no mother. His shaggy hair no one cuts. He was born in the wilderness. No one raised him. Enkidu was standing there and heard the speech. He, blank, and sat down and wept. His eyes filled with tears. His arms felt limp. His strength weakened. They took each other by the hand, and their hands like blank. Enkidu made a declaration to Gilgamesh. In order to protect the cedar forest, Enlil assigned Humbaba as a terror to human beings. Humbaba's roar is a flood, his mouth is fire, and his breath, death. He can hear a hundred leagues away any rustling in this forest. Who would go down into his forest? Enlil assigned him as a terror to human beings. And whoever goes down into his forest, paralysis will strike. So Gilgamesh spoke to Enkidu, saying, What you say, blank. Who, my friend, can ascend to the heavens? The gods can dwell forever with Shamash. As for human beings, their days are numbered. And whatever they keep trying to achieve is but wind. Now you are afraid of death. What has become of your bold strength? I will go in front of you and your mouth can call out, go on closer and do not be afraid. Should I fall, I will have established my fame. It was Gilgamesh who locked in battle with Humbaba the Terrible. You were born and raised in the wilderness. A lion leaped up on you, so you have experienced it all. I will undertake it and I will cut down the cedar. It is I who will establish fame for eternity. Come, my friend, I will go over to the forge and have them cast the weapons in our presence. Holding each other by the hand, they went over to the forge. The craftsmen sat and discussed with one another. We should fashion the axe. The hatchet should be one talent in weight. Their swords should be one talent. Their armor, one talent. Their armor, blank. Gilgamesh said to the men of Uruk, Listen to me, men. You men of Uruk, who know, blank, I want my, I want to make myself more mighty and I will go on a distant journey. I will face fighting such as I have never, I will face fighting such as I have never known. I will set out on a road I have never traveled. Give me your blessings. I will enter the city gate of Uruk. I will devote myself to the New Year's festival. I will perform the New Year's ceremonies in blank. The New Year's festival will take place, celebrations. They will keep shouting, hurrah. Enkidu spoke to the elders. What the men of Uruk say to him that he must not go to the cedar forest. The journey is not to be made. A man who blank the guardian of the cedar forest, blank, the noble counselors of Uruk arose and delivered their advice to Gilgamesh. You are young, Gilgamesh. Your heart carries you off. You do not know what you are talking about. Blank gave birth to you. Humbaba's roar is a flood. His mouth is fire. His breath, death. He can hear any rustling in his forest a hundred leagues away. Who would go down into his forest? Who among even the Ijiji gods can confront him? In order to keep the cedar safe, Enlil assigned him as a terror to human beings. Gilgamesh listened to the statement of his noble counselors. That's end of tablet two. I'm almost... It's like what I... I'm almost tempted to re-record the Epic of Gilgamesh that's found in the Colburn Bible. That is the Epic of Gilgamesh, just called something else. But it has the complete text in there because the Colburn Bible is complete. I'm like, 
feel like I've stumbled upon something here. Substantial. Because never have I heard anyone compare the Epic of Gilgamesh, the story found in much greater detail found in the Colburn Bible. It's pretty cool, man. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for coming through. Um, so many connections, connect, connections, so many connections in so many different cultures around the world. Sometimes buried in disaster, sometimes preserved, sometimes ruined, usually forgotten. Hello, Truman. I think maybe this was a different part of the same story. Maybe intersections with other authors in other places. It would depend on timing, rather than the story reached a scribe. We um we got to read the other one side by side, because I've read that one and I've gone over that story of Gilgamesh in the Colburn Bible dozens of times, and it is the same damn story, and there are no blanks and there's no missing passages from it. Basically, what happened is um. Gilgamesh in the story of the, the Colbrin explains it explains it in more detail. Gilgamesh is sort of a tyrant, and everyone's like, "Yo, we need to give this guy a friend or a companion because he's just a tyrant, and he has sex with everyone's wife on their wedding night." Gilgamesh has to have has to have sex with the with the woman before she gets to have sex with her husband on their wedding night. It's just it was a custom, and so. Well, that's further on in the story, but basically, Enkidu, his comp- his soon-to-be companion, is created by one of the Anunnaki gods in the forest. Comes to adulthood in the forest, a man of the wild, hairy a hairy dude, massive hairy dude, and they lure him out with a harlot, just like this story. And he loses his powers, but then he, everyone loves him because he's just a handyman, basically. And then someone comes to him and says, "Hey, man, there's this tyrant." And he has, he's the king, his name's Gilgamesh, and he has sex with everyone's wife on their wedding night, and it's it's messed up, man. Can you do something about it? And Enkidu goes, yeah, dude, that's awful. Like, let's go. Let's ride. We leave at dawn. Rides out, meets Gilgamesh. They get in this big-ass fight. Um, and, and in here, it says 30 lines are missing, 20 lines are missing. I and mean, well, those missing lines, they're basically the fight was huge. They both fought each other, and no one was going to win the fight. And when they realized that no one was going to win the fight, they realized that they were each other's equal and that they weren't alone in this world, and then they became homies. Um, and then the story plays out from there. And that's exactly, this is, it's the exact same story from the Colburn Bible. And the only thing that's different is the names. And I'm going to go over the names, and they might even be still pretty close. Yeah, it's super cool, Truman. Anywho, if you guys are new, please consider subscribing to the channel. At least like the video so we can crack the algorithm. Who's ready for the third tablet? Who's ready for the third tablet? Um, by the way, I've actually already recorded the other Colburn Bibles, and they're on my channel of this exact story that we're talking about. So if you want to hunt them down, I believe it's book three. Uh, we just did five. I believe it's book four, the book of the sons of fire. You'll find this story like almost in the beginning of the book. But um, I'll, I'll help you guys out if if, uh, if you don't feel like carrying the endeavor yourself to hunt it down. Okay, let's see here. Tablet 3. The elders spoke to Gilgamesh, saying, Gilgamesh, do not put your trust in just your vast strength, but keep a sharp eye out. Make each blow strike and mark. The one who goes ahead saves the comrade. The one who knows the route protects his friend. Let Enkidu go ahead of you. He knows the road to the cedar forest. He has seen fighting, experienced battle. 
Enkidu will protect the friend, will keep the comrade safe. Let his body urge him back to the wives. In order... In our assembly, we have entrusted the king to you, Enkidu. And on your return, you must entrust the king back to us. Gilgamesh spoke to Enkidu, saying, Come on, my friend. Let us go to the Egelmal temple, to Ninsen, the great queen. Ninsen is wise, all-knowing. She will put the advisable path at our feet, taking each other by the hand. Taking each other by the hand, Gilgamesh and Enkidu walked to the Egelma, the great palace, to Ninsun, the great queen. Gilgamesh arose and went to her. Ninsun, even though I am extraordinarily strong, I must now travel a long way to where Humbaba is. I must face fighting such as I have not known, and I must travel on a road that I do not know. Until the time that I go and return, until I reach the cedar forest, until I kill Humbaba the Terrible, and eradicate from the land something baneful that Shamash hates, intercede with Shamash on my behalf. If I kill Humbaba and cut his cedar, let there be rejoicing all over the land, and I will erect a monument of victory before you. The words of Gilgamesh, her son, grieving, Queen Ninsun heard over and over. Ninsun went into her living quarters. She washed herself with the purity plant. She donned a robe worthy of her body. She donned jewels worthy of her chest. She donned her sash and put on her crown. She sprinkled water from a bowl onto the ground. She blank and went up to the roof. She went up to the roof and set incense in front of Shamash. She offered a fragrant cutting and raised her arms to Shamash. She said, Why have you imposed, nay, inflicted, a restless heart on my son Gilgamesh. Now you have touched him so that he wants to travel a long way to where Humbaba is. He will face fighting such as he has not known and will travel on a road that he does not know. Until he goes away and returns, until he reaches the cedar forest, until he kills Humbaba the terrible and eradicates from the land something baneful that you hate, on the day that you see him on the road, may Aja, the bride, without fear, remind you, and command also the watchmen of the night, the stars, and at night your father, Sin. She banked up the incense and uttered the ritual words. She called to Enkidu and would give him instructions. Enkidu, the mighty. Hold on, I think my son's calling me. I'm in the den, baby. What's up? What's up? Okay, come here. Oh. Oh, it's raining? Wow. That's cool. Hold on, my son wants me to see the rain with him. Give me like two seconds. Drink some water. Stand up, stretch. Oh, nice. It's raining outside. Enkidu, the mighty, you are not of my womb. But now I speak to you along with the sacred votaries of Gilgamesh, the high priestesses, the holy women, the temple servers. She laid a pendant on Enkidu's neck. The high priestesses took and the daughters of the gods. 
I have taken blank Enkidu. Enkidu to blank Gilgamesh I have taken. Until he goes and returns, until he reaches the cedar forest, be it a month, be it a year. About 11 lines are missing here, and the placement of the following fragment is uncertain. It's very broken here. Stay with me. The gate of cedar, blank, Enkidu in the temple of Shamash, and Gilgamesh in Igalma. He made an offering of cuttings, the sons of the king. Perhaps some 60 lines are missing here. Enkidu will protect the friend, will keep the comrade safe. Let his body urge him back to the wives. In our assembly we have entrusted the king to you, and on your return you must entrust the king back to us. Enkidu spoke to Gilgamesh, saying, My friend, turn back the road blank, and the last lines are missing. And that's the end of the tablet three. Oh, so we don't even have tablet four. Okay, well, it's raining, and I told my son I would play with him when the rain came, so. The, the sky water falls here in Southern California like once every six years, so it's a big deal for us when it rains. I don't know where you guys are from. I know some of you guys are in uh, British Columbia. I think some, or someone said Vancouver. I'm sure you get a lot of rain, but when the sky, I'm sure you guys get a lot of sky water up there. But what, down here, it is a celebration when the sky water comes. It is a celebration. Oh, Sir Jones, welcome. Welcome, Sir Jones. Thank you so much, brother. Yeshua versus Jesus is ex is, a, is an example. Or Yad, he, he, I am that. All right, so I might say something that m might make you guys not watch my videos anymore. But it has to be said. Islam, all the Abrahamic religions, their roots verbatim are written in the Sumerian tablets, Babylonians, Assyrians. Uh, I don't know if you've read Zachariah Sitchin's work. S some of his, some of Sitchin's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? His, um, oh, why am I drawing a blank? Zachariah Stitch Sitchin's interpretations. Some of his interpretations might be questioned but the work themselves is real so for example the story of noah's ark um the the story of the tower of babel uh, and no uh, we'll start with noah's ark and noah's ark is not that's not that's not god so the bible says oh it's god and god created heaven and earth it was just one dude it wasn't god it wasn't one dude it was many gods if you take it to be truth it was many gods it was the anunnaki in the Bible and in the Sumerian text, say there was a great flood. Um, one of the one of the gods and or angels comes down, tells this gentleman, "Hey, there's going to be a huge flood. I need you to build an ark. I need you to save the seed of all of the domesticated animals because everything's going to die. It's going to be wept away in a cataclysm." The dude builds an ark. The storms come. The great deluge comes. They're floating. No one survives. He releases a raven, a crow, and then finally a dove. A dove brings back an olive branch, symbolizing that dry land is near. The Bible is the same thing. Flood appears to a dream. Rains. Kills everyone. They go on the boat. They bring back an, A dove brings back an olive branch. So the part that might upset people when I say this is people take the bible verbatim and there is a lot of esoteric knowledge in the bible and there is history there and there is lessons and there is fascination but it is not as close to source as you can get so for the people out there who 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 look to the bible for answers not that it's a bad place to look but there if you like it there is a more accurate place to look um the tower of babel it was actually marduk son of enki he finally got a whole bunch of humans. He was the king of them. He wanted to build his own temple, his own spaceport, basically, to connect to the gods. Uh, the Anunnaki come back. They see the land. They see the tower. And they go, look how powerful Enkidu is with with the, the one race of humanity behind his back. Look how powerful he's become. We can't let this happen. So what they do is the Anunnaki destroy the temple. 
And here's the key part. They specifically scatter the people and they, they give them different languages. They isolate the different populations of human and they give them tablets to teach them new languages. And the reason why they do that is because if they all have different languages, they, they will not be as powerful because they can't communicate with each other. Now, if you guys know the Bible and the story of Babel, the Tower of Babel, what I just told you wasn't the story of the Tower of Babel. That was actually a story from one of the Anunnaki tablets, the Sumerian tablets. What the Tower of Babel says is mankind in its arrogance and pride wanted to build a temple that, that uh, reached the heavens. Sound familiar? And God one day thought, in the Bible it says us, God says, it's been a while since we've visited human. Let us, plural, go down and see what human is up, man is up to. Man, God goes down there, sees how powerful man has become when he has one nation and he is one race destroys the tower, spreads humanity across the planet, and confounds their language so they can't understand one another. Sound familiar? Um, and that's where we get the word Babel from. Like, what are you babbling about? Babel. Babylon. Babel. To babble because they no longer could understand what the other person was saying. And these are just two stories, you guys. These are two stories. And so Cain, Abael, were two people create Anu or, or Adamu. Adam, the first man created, was Adamu of the earth. Clay. Sound familiar? Cain and Abiel, two brothers that killed each other. One brother killed each other. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abiel, those are, that's a Sumerian story. So I, I was raised Catholic. I guess the reason, what, Keith, what's your point? The reason why I'm so adamant about this is because if you're like me, you're trying to go as, you, you're trying to find the stories as originally as, and and out of con and within context as possible, it's like the telephone game. You have a bunch of kids, and you have them all say, "Hey, the purple pancakes are on fire," or, or you, you tell them, uh, "I like trees." And by the other end of it, they say something like, "The purple pancake is on fire." Right? The telephone game. We all know that. So so studying like the King James version of the Bible is like is like sixty children down the line while you're playing the telephone game. Um, that's why I've been so, these past year I've been just going balls deep into the Anunnaki stories, even Babylonian, Assyrian, Hittite, because those were immediately after the Sumerian cultures. Uh, point being, you're getting these stories as close to their original text as possible, as possible. Um, and this information is out. This isn't a conspiracy theory. You literally can go. Like I said, you can go read the Sumerian tab. We're reading them now. In actually, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, I believe it's Tablet 14. I haven't read it yet, but what I've heard is that that's where the story is, where, where we get to hear about the god that comes down and tells, I forgot the names, through reeds. So uh, some stories he tells them in a dream vision, and other stories he tells them through reeds, because the, the thing was Enlil and Enki, Enlil wants humanity dead. And everyone agrees, okay, we're not going to tell humans about anything. I will not tell them. And so Enki goes, fine, I won't. Enki loves humans. And Enki goes, all right, I won't tell the humans, but I'll appear to them in a dream. In some stories, he appears to him in a dream, to Noah. Other stories, he hides behind a wall of reeds. And Enlil goes, what the hell, man? I thought we, I thought we said we weren't going to tell humans. And Enki says, I didn't tell humans. I spoke to a wall of reeds, while on the other wall was one of his hybrid sons noah and he was saying hey yo build an ark dude because you're all about to be wiped out by a huge flood anywho <sighs> anywho i would love to come back and finish this um i just want to there's cookies inside waiting for me and there's raining and it's like we got rain vibes um that, that's just some food for thought that's just from food for thought don't shoot the messenger man we're, out, we're all out here just trying to find answers. And we, I'm sure we can all agree, <laughs> all agree that they, that they hide a lot of stuff from us. They hide a lot of stuff from us, they do. Zechariah Sitchin. Elohim means God. Yes, exactly. Elohim means gods. I mean, if you read the Tanakh, for example. Like, I, I, I was, I stopped reading 
the Bible because I wanted to read the Jewish Tanakh because the Old Testament in the Bible is the Jewish Tanakh. So I was like, why would I, why would I, I'll just read the Jewish Tanakh if I want to read the Old Testament. Why would I read mine when their version is older and more closely related to the actual truth? And I didn't even realize that the Tanakh was plagiarized. And it's, it's just, isn't that insane that there are, the globe itself is dominated by people who, who literally die for their, for their books that they study and their books are plagiarized and I, and I, I haven't even had conversations with like rabbis and stuff and like can you imagine going to a to a rabbi and being like hey uh every story you have in the bible is written verbatim almost in the sumerian tablets or islam or christianity and and hear their response and, and like can we have a conversation about this can we have a conversation about this because it, it what is the point of hunting for truth and seeking out truth, which religions do, when you, when, when you are presented with that truth, you don't want to hear it if it usurps what you already find to be true? I don't get it, man. It's weird. It's weird. They built the tower so they wouldn't be dispersed ambiguous figs that's what the bible says but the original story the humans didn't build the tower it was actually marduk son of anki or enlil so you have anu who's the dad he's the king of nibiru and then his two sons anki and enlil are on earth maintaining earth to extract gold for nibiru because their atmospheres is thinning and they need gold for the atmosphere so the so the mythology and lore goes and Leo doesn't really like humans. Enki does. Um, and then you have the Ajiji. The Ajiji were like these hybrids. The, the, the humans considered the Ajiji gods as well. They were like in between the Sumerian. They were in between the Anunnaki and the humans. Um, but the, the Ajiji and the giants and the Nephilim, the offspring of, of Anunnaki when they mixed with humans, those are the ones that were being wiped out during these floods. Except for Noah. Noah was a son of Enki, so Noah was not human. According to the original post, Noah, or the original story, Noah was a hybrid god, a hybrid Anunnaki, which which makes kind of sense because in the Bible they say everyone pre-flood in the Bible in the Old Testament and the Tanakh lived to be like a thousand years old. Why, why would they say that? Why, or why, why would they mention that? And then we find out in a different text that Oh, those guys were actually crossed with the Anunnaki. Some of them, not all of them, were crossed with Anunnaki. The Anunnaki who lived thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, actually, if we're going according to the lore and mythology. This is why I, I get so stoked on this kind of stuff. It's like, yo, the answers are out there. You just got to be, you just got to be willing to hear them when they come across you. Um... Oh, the rain. Can you guys hear the rain? I got to go out. I'm missing the rain with the fam. We got a, We have a new channel member. Sir Jones. Are you still here, Sir Jones? Oh, Sir Jones. Everyone, welcome Sir Jones to channel member. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for your support. I'll be on later, I promise. I, I, there's, I just, there's so much out. There's so much to do in so little time. I want to hang out with you guys and keep reading the, the epic of Gilgamesh and get into the story of the flood. I want to eat cookies and enjoy the rain and enjoy the sky water with my family. But I'll come back and read to you guys more. Thank you for joining. Um, thank you for the tips and donations. If you want to join my Patreon, or if you, it, it's in the description. If you want to be a, become a channel member, you can do it right here. If you want to just click the like, bu like button and share the content, that's awesome too. This is it's for certainly share worthy in circles. I would love to crack into some new circles if you guys have communities or discords or Facebook groups or Instagrams or TikToks, anything that you're related in this world and you want to plug some of these videos so that we can expand the amount of letters into new avenues, that would be wonderful too. Um, there's a thousand ways to help other than what you're already doing here, which is just hanging and being homies, which I really appreciate. Elephant Hawk Moon. Hello, Elephant Hawk. Nice to see you. Uh, 
Nice to feel yes, I guess. Um, I can't see your message. It's like being weird. I'm having to. Re I'm reposting your message because it glitched out and I can't read it. That's crazy to me. You are taught one thing your whole life, then you get told, but there's more. I know, dude. I know, Rusty Utter. <sighs> okay, well I'm gonna leave now because before I stall. I'll be on in a few hours. I'll post on the community tab to let you guys know I'm going live too because I don't know. We have eight to 17,000 subscribers, but I feel like 2% get notifications. Anywho, um, love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you super soon. Okay, I'll see you super soon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye.